Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show you 10 cards using the Spellbinders Card Kit of the Month from June 2022, and that is called Party Hats and Streamers. You get a lot in the kits, so I wanted to show you on this first card how to use the dies. So here I am cutting out Make a Wish using the two word dies, uh, Make and AR one on one die. Then the rest of it is the hat. So first I'm gonna get my card base ready by putting down gold mirrored cardstock and I used uh, four and a quarter by five and a half. Then I used the striped paper to create the next layer which was four by five and a quarter. And this balloon piece I did not measure but it's a scrap from a different card. But it's just a smaller panel basically. Now for the dies to make the hat. You first need the big section to make the hat and the striped overlay. That will get you the yellow piece. Then this white piece I die cut and cut off those wings on the side. Then this piece that has a small and a big side will be the pom-pom and the curved one will be the bottom edge of the hat. And of course I have the make a and wish that I already used to cut it out. I like that they're keeping this font. Um, I have several other words from other card kits. And if you got the Koala Smiles card kit of the month from last month, you might have hang in there. So you can start building some sentences perhaps or other sentiments, um, putting the two together. So anyway, I'm going to use my liquid glue and I'm going to use Barely Art glue to assemble my party hat. There isn't really a right or wrong side for that white piece, so I'm just going to put it right down and give it a little press just to make sure it doesn't pop off. It's pretty thick paper, so um, I didn't line it up perfectly, but I just lopped off the top and you won't even see it from the finished product, so I thought it was okay. Then for the fringe on the bottom, I'm going to make sure that the right side is facing up and for right now, the wrong side's facing up since I'm trying to assemble it on the back. And I really liked the way that the fringe turned out because it is all free moving on the bottom. So once it's on the card, you can kind of give it a fluff. Now the fringe for the pom-pom, I cut to be a little bit smaller because this isn't the first hat that I've made and I thought that it was a little bit too large for my style, but that's the fun part about um, crafting. You can make it however you want. If the die doesn't work for what you want to do, cut it. If a stamp doesn't work, cut it. I'm going to be doing that in just a little bit in this video. I know some people are shocked, <laughs> but it's yours. So there you go. Anyway, you just give it a little glue at the end and fluff it up. And that's it. And if you don't want to make the pom-pom with paper, you could certainly use other things like pom-poms if you have like the fuzzy pom-poms in your stash or um, something else, which I will show you on my, I believe the third video. So if you're interested, stay tuned. <laughs> now I'm going to use an orange scrap from my card stock scrap area and I'm going to pounce the words on a little bit of liquid glue to get the glue on the bottom of the words. I used um, a scrap paper pattern paper to make the make a wish so the paper is awfully thin so I didn't want to put my glue directly on the back with the fine tip uh, because it would probably warp so doing this pouncing method works really well for delicate papers. Now the party hat has a little bit of tabs on the side so I just went ahead and gave them an extra fold added glue and it's pretty three-dimensional so this is really neat die. I mean really any birthday card whether it's for someone who is younger, older, really anyone in your life, male, female, would like a party hat. Who doesn't like a party hat? <laughs> so you can change the color, you could use patterned paper, to make it, you could use gold mirrored cardstock. Ooh, <laughs> you could really do anything to make that hat unique. 
So I just set it off to the side so that pom pom would stay on and give it give a chance for the glue to dry. So now I'm working on the second card, which I'm going to go ahead and use a scrap of white paper to go behind my chipboard frame here. And I'm actually using a thick piece that came behind the ephemera pack. And I'm going to use my stamp set here. And I chose to use sending birthday hugs because I'm using this little cat with the party hat. I thought it would be pretty sweet. So I'm going to use a stamp block for this. Sometimes I use my Misty stamp positioner, but I just wasn't feeling it today. Sometimes I'm a little random and that's what I did today. So I'm going to stamp that on. I didn't know if I want it in the corner, but I have settled with putting it in the middle. Since it's on that other paper that has kind of like a shine to it, I did just go ahead with my heat embosser and give it a little dry, pretty simple. Then I'm going to use my liquid glue and stick that paper into the frame. Now I didn't want my frame here just to be kind of floating in nothingness, so I thought it needed something to anchor it to the background. So I yes, I put my liquid glue on, but then I thought, oh, just wait a minute, I need something on the back. <laughs> so I went over to my little stash that I keep on the side of my desk when I'm working through a card kit and I thought that that matched the flowers and the banner really well. So I trimmed it to size so it would match the width of the striped paper and centered it on those white stripes so it would have a nice border. Then by that time, my liquid glue had dried a little bit so I added even more on. In the kit, there are these party hats that have foam in the back and I layered them on a different card. So I have an extra foam square, which I'm going to use behind the cat. And I'm going to use, there it is. And I'm going to use liquid glue for the flowers. And the chipboard sentiment that says birthday bestie, I think. Yes, birthday bestie. I'm going to use liquid glue on. The chipboard sentiments are sticky, but they can fall off. So I usually add liquid glue on the back of them. And when I plan out my cards for video, I'm touching everything and it does lose its stick just a little bit. Next, I'm going to add the sequins that come in the kit. And I like to work in odd numbers, so I will put three on each card. If you're interested in seeing what the kit comes with, I did make an unboxing video for this month. So that's a, an option. So if you're looking for that, you can go on my channel. But now I'm going to color in the sending birthday hugs with my Copic markers. And this one is yellow red 02. And I did just want to show you the paper that I used wasn't the most Copic friendly, which I thought should have thought about before doing this. But like I said, sometimes I'm a little creative and <laughs> I kind of just do. But yeah, <laughs> so it did go out of the lines just a little bit, but that's okay. Way of crafting, you can either, you can do two things. You can start over or just go with it. And I chose just to go with it. Then I added these little dots all around just to give it a little bit of fun. There's the finished card. For my next card, I really loved the way that this ended up looking at the end. I thought it was just so playful and fun. So first I took this candles. Now this was a border or like a banner, but I cut it so it would fit on the outside. I knew that my rainbow was going there and the space in the middle would not even be seen at the end. So if you're looking for something to kind of stretch like that, just chop it off. Like I said before, you can cut things, make them your own. Then I'm using three ice cream cones. The two in the back are ephemera pieces, so they're paper. And then the one that's small is a chipboard ice cream cone. So technically, yes, it's paper, but it's thicker. And I just made this little cluster and gluing that right down onto the card. Now I'm going to take the cat and put it next to the rainbow and take the stamp 
there was just a little bit of white so I just trimmed it off but I'm going to take that stamp and put it in the inside for a little bit of interest sometimes if I am planning out a card and things just don't look right having a ton of stuff on the outside I'll just stick it in the inside because it goes with the theme of the card but it might be a little bit too much on the front or it might not fit the design that I'm thinking of in my head. So this is my finished card. Pretty sweet. Now my next one, this is where I cut the stamp. So if you're bothered by that, I'm sorry, but it's mine. I bought it. <laughs> oh well. All right, now this candle set um, popped into my head right away. So all I did was cut off the one candle that was offset. And I know that I have scraps like these three pieces of paper all the time from card kits because I cut up my pattern paper and I use it as much as possible. And I thought that that would look nice as a three layered cake. And these little candles would be perfect to go on top. And I was so excited because I knew that I could reuse this stamp over and over and over and make a lot of cards with my pattern paper scraps, which I do not like to keep around. So I want to use them like this. So I just used my Misty and inked up some paper and I used some Copic friendly paper to do that. Um, I will have that linked in the description if you're wondering. I know it has a chameleon on the package, at least the one that I bought. So I call it the chameleon paper, I know. And, and like I said, I will have it in the description. But for my flames, I'm going to use Y13, which is the yellow 13, and YR04, and that was the yellow red. Now for my candles, I'm using YG11, which is the green, Y21, which is the light um, yellow here on the left, and YR00 for that orangey color just to kind of complement the pattern paper, but not be too matchy-matchy. So this style, I feel like I will be doing a lot of because you can change the colors of the candles and use any paper, any color you want and make it a really fun birthday card. So I will just use my liquid glue starting from the top and work my way down so the top layer will be underneath the next layer. I like the look of that rather than the other way around. It looks more deliberate and more like a cake in my opinion. I thought that that pink paper that had the little swoops down looked very appropriate for a birthday cake, kind of like frosting. Now the sentiment, just say yay, was part of the dimensional stickers in the card kit and I thought perfect this will go on the on the cake but now that I've used them on this card they I don't have them anymore so if I was going to remake this card again I might use just some alphabet letters from my stash or other alphabet stickers to make a similar sentiment or maybe even put the person's name on the cake so just some ideas that I've had in my head And you know that I love my reverse tweezers, which is the tool I'm using in my right hand. I uh, use them almost on every card, so I highly recommend reverse tweezers if you don't have any. You should probably get some. <laughs> All right, now to finish off this card, I'm going to use glossy accents and put it on the wax part of the candles just to give it a little bit of shine. And again, if you know glossy accents, you know to leave it to the side, but if you don't, I will just tell you, it does take a little bit to dry. So put it off to the side for, I usually say about an hour or so, just so it doesn't get bumped and mess up your project. Now for my next card, I used gold mirror and cardstock and I used, I have paper punches. Now I cut out that circle from the gold mirror and cardstock and put it right on to my card base. And now I'm going to cover it up with some cardstock, like so. And you wouldn't even know that this big circle is missing. And I know some people will say, oh, well, you can feel the circle. No, you really can't. <laughs> it's pretty small. And with the things that I'm layering on top, 
it doesn't really matter to me. But if it does matter to you, you can go ahead and cut some scrap paper and put it in that center and you wouldn't even know. I don't know why, but I've been drawn to circles recently, so I've been using a lot of circles, especially for the cards in this card kit. So I'm going to use some liquid glue and adhere everything down. And this is a chip chipboard sentiment, so again, I use a little bit of liquid glue just to make sure it stays in place. And I will finish the card off with five gold sequins just to give it some more bling. <laughs> and there's the finished card. Now, I loved this pattern paper here in my hand that had all the text on it. I thought it was really fun and that some of the words were highlighted in different colors it was really neat to pull in different other different papers. So I'm using this little polka dot paper and a chipboard frame here to I'm sorry, it's not chipboard, it is ephemera. And I'm going to make a little window for my cat stamp to sit in. And yes, I got glue on it, so I just flipped it over and used the other side. Like I said, when crafting, you can either go with it or start over. <laughs> and we're going with it. So I'm going to use liquid glue to put everything down on this card, and including this chipboard sentiment. Now I wanted to use these sequins and I liked them but I didn't. I decided I'm not going to use the sequins this time. I'm going to use these little circles that I punched out of the pattern paper just to match the pink paper there and create kind of a polka dot effect. And I got to this point and thought okay uh, it needs some more. So I cut this one in half and made two halves going off of the edges, like that. Not to say that I don't like sequins, because I really do, but again, I've been drawn to circles. I don't know why. <laughs> There's my finished card. Let's start the party. Now for this one, I'm going to use my Misty, especially since I don't have extra pattern paper. So since I'm stamping directly onto pattern paper, I want to make sure that I can go back twice like I just did and make sure that this stamped impression was perfect. And that little eye for birthdays on the very bottom of the sentiment did not stamp, so I just used a black marker and just filled in the dot. Now this design I had the materials for and I liked it so much that I made two. So to put down my flowers here on the corner, I just am using some purple craft tape to stick it up and put some liquid glue on the back. Then I will place it on my card and gently remove the purple tape. And I found a little party hat from the ephemera pack that, or I guess called die cut pack, that matched the pattern paper. So I put that in the inside of the card and finished it off by adding three sequins. And like I said, I made two different cards of the same design. So here's my finished card with two finished cards. <laughs> now I'm going to use my scraps here to make a background. So I have these panels that I just used from the other card. Now this is the scrap and it will end up looking like one big piece in the back because I'm putting this polka dot paper over the top. I'm going to place it a little offset, and just like that, it looks like I have a full floral piece of paper, but I do not. Off camera, I went ahead and stamped out the sentiment on the right there, and now I'm going to put down my party hats. If you remember, I did use that little hexagon that I took off of this middle piece on the cat from the earlier card. So I'm just going to add a little bit of liquid glue and press everything down. Finish it off with sequins and that's the finished card. I loved how big and puffy those pom-poms were. It's definitely a card to hand deliver since it will be a bit thick. Now this card design um, I also had the materials for two so I made two cards. 
Now when I make butterfly or have butterflies on cards, I always put a little bit of foam squares on the wings and glue in the center. This just gives the butterflies a bit of dimension. Now there are so many things that come in the card kit that I just have to make more than one video because there's so many things <laughs> and I have all these ideas. So this is the first video of the card kits but I will have two more coming up and I usually will do a what's left over video. So if you're interested in seeing what's left over after I make 35 cards this time, then stay tuned and watch the other two videos completing the kit and one more with the what's left over. So I will finish off this card using the little stamp in the corner there, putting a little bit of Wink of Stella, which is a glitter water pen on the butterflies. And then I will use the glossy accents again on the candle on the bottom. Now I will say, if you're going to do this one again, I would use glossy accents very lightly because on my cards, the candle wasn't glued down of a lot and I used a lot of glossy accents and it ended up kind of peeling off although the card still looks nice in the end. Now for my last card for this video, I'm going to make the party hat again, and this time it's kind of a pinky girly card. Since I already showed the assembly on the first one, I will just show the making of putting it together. And this pink paper that I used to make a wish was cardstock, so I just put my glue on directly and did not use the pouncing method. So if you've never had a card kit, I encourage you to try one and see what you can do with them. And if you're overwhelmed by all the ideas, try to get ideas from other people and recreate their designs at first. And eventually you will be able to start making your own designs and it, it just gets easier over time for your eye to see things that go together. But I definitely recommend giving it a try if you haven't before. And if you're someone who's gotten many card kits and you just like to watch these videos for inspiration, I'm so glad that you stayed to the end here and saw what I did with mine. And I encourage you to make something beautiful because there's all these materials, but everyone does different things with them. So give it a try, see what you make, send them off to friends and family. Just enjoy the process of creating something unique or fun to you. If you're interested in buying this card kit, I do have a link in the description. So you can go ahead and use that and give it a try. So here are all 10 of my cards technically 12 since I made two doubles. I can't decide which one's my favorite, but eh, I don't know. If you have a favorite, I'd love to hear it in the comment section. And if you have any questions about anything or comments in general, you can leave them in the comments and let me know. So thank you so much for watching this video. And if you liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos in the future. Bye.